How's it going everybody? In our next video, we're going to be continuing on where what we need to focus on in this video is NAT. And that's actually going to be something that if you haven't done a lot with, I know probably within the last two to three years, it's becoming more and more prevalent in environments that I've worked in to have VPN and NAT on the same device. So we're going to be walking you through how to set up NAT on an iOS router and an ASA to allow connectivity to the internet, which is the whole point of an internet edge device, and then also be able to do VPN connectivity. We'll take a look at exactly how that comes into play and stuff like that because it's going to be necessary to understand how the processes come into play. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and set up, set up the NAT config. So on CSR1, one of the first things we're going to do is configure a interface. So in this case here, it's going to be interface loopback 0. And we're just going to give it the IP address of everybody's favorite DNS information, Google. So now that we have that in play, what we're going to go do is on CSR2, is we're going to go to global config, and on interface gig 1, we're going to go ahead and type in the IP NAT. We have we have several options available to us. Uh, we can do inside, outside, stuff like that. We're going to type in outside, and then on interface gig two, we're going to type in IP NAT inside. And we also have to create an access list in order to allow the traffic to be NATed. Here's the main sticking point with this: when you configure the access list. So uh, to be called from global config, the access list, if you choose to use a standard ACL, matches only on the source traffic. So you're basically saying, you know what, I really don't care what the destination is, I just want to match on this particular source, and it's the entire IP stack, which is a bad thing, especially if you're trying to run any NAT, or I'm sorry, any VPN connectivity alongside of it. So if you want to run NAT and VPN at the same time, a standard ACL just isn't going to cut it. You need to have an extended ACL that's going to match on the traffic that you need to be NATted, but also have entries in there to do a lot, to allow the VPN traffic. So here's I'm going to first set it up so the NAT works out of the gate. We're going to test out VPN connectivity to see if it, if it works, and then troubleshoot it to show you how to resolve the, those issues. So I'm going to type an IP access list is going to be extended and call it VPN underscore NAT. I'm going to type in permit IP of 10.1.0.0.0.255.255 to any destination, right? And I'm going to type in IP NAT inside source list is going to be VPN NAT. And I'm going to type in interface and gig one and overload. So we we're doing PAT essentially. Now if I go to back to CSR1, I'm sorry, CSR7, and I come in here and I do a, a ping to quad 8, give it a second, let's see why is this not working, oh, uh, no that should be everything that I needed to do. Do ping 8.8.8.8. That works. Why is CSR7 giving me a hard time? CSR2, let's see. The configuration is squared. Do show IP interface brief. Do show IP access list. Oh, I never sourced it, that's why. Um, source from loopback zero. Duh. So, show IP NAT translations. Ta-da, we have a ping. So, we have that going for us. So we know that that comes into play and does the job that we need it to. So the way that you should read the 
setup that we have right there is that we have a inbound, we have a connection coming from CSR7 that's going to quad eight, and but we're sourcing it off of loopback uh, 10.1.0.7, in this particular case, loopback zero. So that means that when we go to send the connectivity out, it's gotta be sourced off of a, an address inside of the access list. Now, if I try to do a ping test, from let's say ping, or I'm sorry, on CSR7. If I tried to do a ping test to 172.24.0.8, sourcing from loopback zero, now we're getting unreachable messages. And these unreach unreachable messages basically are saying, I don't know how, uh, I'm, I'm trying to gnat the traffic. So what's happening here is now we're, you notice that we don't have anything showing up here, but if we do a show IP access list, show IP access list, we should be getting hits on these entries, but we're not. Because what's gonna end up happening is we have to route first and then encrypt. And what's gonna end up happening is when we're trying to send the traffic out, it's matching on these other ACLs. So we should be matching on this traffic up here and not this guy. So let's try to ping again. And then we're gonna go back to CSR2. And you can see that we're trying to ping, right? We're trying to ping outbound, but we can't. So how do we resolve this problem? The easiest way to do this would be to look at the, the, the NAT config here. And what we'd have to do is go underneath this IP access list extended and then choose the name of this guy and then put an entry in above it. So type in, let's say three, we're gonna say deny IP of 10.1.0.0, 0.0.255.255 to 172.24.0.8. And okay, so now if I do show IP access list again, you'll see now that I have a, a deny entry in there. So if I go back to CSR7 again, and I try to do that same ping, the ping should work, and there it goes. So if we go back to CSR2, and we show IP access list, you can see that traffic going to the original access list, we have two matches, and if we look at the do show crypto ISASA, we the connection is is up and running and working as it's expected to now the interesting thing about this is if we were to do a let's jump out of global config and let's do a clear crypto isocamp and then we're gonna kill one of these connections so let's look at let's do the one for 1001 and we're going to grab the connection ID and then we're going to we're going to clear that connection. We'll say show crypto ISA SA. So we deleted that individual session. We're going to debug crypto Ike or sorry, uh, Isacamp. And then we're going to trigger that connection again. On CSR7, we're going to hit the up arrow and we're going to go ahead and send the traffic. What's gonna end up happening that you'll see is that, let's see, did it? We should get, we should see, that's going to, we're getting dead peer detection messages from ASA1. But what we should see when we go to send connect connections, actually I cleared, I cleared the connection. Let's do a clear crypto IPsec, clear crypto SA peer of 41.0.0.4. Let's get that completely done. Let's actually blow it away. That's what I needed to do. And what we're going to go ahead and do is I've got the debug running. 
So now we go back to CSR7 and we'll hit the up arrow and the traffic should be sent, which it is. And what I'm expecting to see when we do this is give it a second to let's undebug it all. Is if we screwed up a little bit towards the top here, we should see that when we do this, that it says the speaking to another iOS box says his hash has no match. This node is outside NAT. And if we look at the show IP NAT translations, let's do this uh, ping one more time. Let's do the ping to global. Go back to CSR2. Now you won't see anything interesting popping up through here because we're not actually trying to push CSR7 as a NAT entry or I'm sorry, as a, as a VPN endpoint trying to go through CSR2 which is doing NAT. We're simply running NAT in accordance with uh, VPN so it's not CSR7 running VPN to CSR4 we're doing CSR2 to CSR4 as the VPN connection, but CSR2 is also doing NAT. So we just allowed the communication to go back and forth. We're actually not doing anything special with Ike to allow, or Isocamp to allow the, v, the, the NATing to go through. We haven't actually had to do that yet. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on ASA1 because it's gonna be interesting. You're gonna wanna do it there as well. And so I'm gonna go ahead and create a uh, network object but a global config type an object of network and we're going to specify the object name is going to be um, we'll use the uh, vrf underscore s4 we're going to type in the uh, the subnet in this particular case is going to be 172.24.0.0 slash 24 and then we're going to specify that it's a NAT from the inside to the outside dynamic and an interface so basically we're just going to be setting up pat we also need to come in here if we do a show run nat our configuration is pretty square show nat we're going to have in section two you'll see that communication is happening to um well actually we'll go to csr8 and do this connection first we do a show ip route vrf s4 and we're going to do a ping to a ping VRF uh, S4 to quad 8, sourcing off of loopback. And we're just going to grab this loopback right here and hit the enter key. Let's see why is it not working. We matched off of. Yeah, that should be working. Oh, I see why. Let's try that. So, we're trying to ping. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant the, that's the wrong one. So, I want to do not S4, I want to do 31. That's my fault, I apologize about that. Uh, that's gonna be S11. We'll try to ping that way instead. And I need to change the subnet on the, the network object on the ASA. So if we go back to um, Let, let me just do this. Let me just get rid of this object. And we'll type an object of network of VRF S11. Subnet is going to be 172.31.0.0 slash 24. And then we're going to say uh, NAT. We'll just grab this line of config again. Like so. We're going to go back to CSR8. Try to ping again and see why this isn't working. Let's 
show net. We are getting hits back. Why is it not working? Show. Let's ping quad eight. That's working. Let's see why it's not coming back. Oh, I know why. Um, so this is a classic problem with ASAs. If you uh, weren't aware of this, this is a classic problem. If we do a show run policy map, you'll notice that ICMP isn't inspected. So we need to inspect ICMP. So we'll go ahead and do that real quick. Go to global config, and then we will do a ICMP map inspection. So now we're gonna inspect it. We go back to CSR8, we hit the up arrow. The ping works this time. We go back over here to, to show NAT, and we can see that there are hits. We do show con long. We won't see anything because it's already timed out. Show, um, show xlate. We have an entry in the connect the translation table that's showing the connection going through and working. But now we, if we try to do pings, so we try to ping, for example, ping brf s11 to 10.1.0.7 sourcing from loop back from here and we try to do this ping right here the ping will fail and if we look at the ASA we can see that it's trying to send the traffic but it won't be able to we're trying we're it's not even triggering the connection table so what we have to do is resolve that issue and to resolve that issue we can do something similar to what we were doing before. So uh, for correlation perspective on the iOS routers, we simply create an, another en entry in the access list and just deny a particular prefix um, from getting natted. We have to do something a little bit different here. So there's a couple ways you can do this. The, there's the topic or the technique is called twice nat. The idea is you want to be able to maintain the source and destination prefixes even after a nat. So you want to nat the source to itself and the destination to itself so that the source and destination match on the crypto ACL that's been listed in the access list. If we take a look at exactly how this looks and do a show access list, you're gonna see that we have a VPN traffic where we need to match this is the source and this is the destination. Well, in order to do this, we actually need to match on those. So I'm gonna create a couple of objects just so it makes more sense. So I have an object of network and we're gonna uh, call this local net and we're gonna type in subnet of 172.31.0.0 slash 24, I'm sorry, slash 16. And then we're going to create one that's called, let's take it out of there, uh, object of network of remote net and type in subnet of 10.1.0.0 slash 16. Okay, now that we've created that, the goal that we want to create is calling, we want to say NAT, we want to do a uh, inside to outside but our goal is to create a source NAT that is static and then we want to specify that the the object of local net is mapped to local net and we want to create a destination based mapping that is also static where we specify that the remote net is maintained as the remote net and we want to make sure that there is uh, no proxy R, uh, ARP and a route lookup is done. So we do a show run NAT. The logic of this one says I want to create a NAT going from the inside to the outside and I said, I want to make sure if the source is coming from the local net, and if we do a show run object of network, we're going to have a couple of entries here. 
The local net is going to be 172.31 slash 16. And then the remote net is 10 anything 10 1, which is going to match on our show access list. Let's go and go ahead and scoot this up a little bit just so it correlates. The way this is going to be tied together is it's a local net of 172.31 slash 16 comes in, and the destination is remote net of 10.1.0.0 slash 16. We want to keep the local net set to itself, so 172.31.0.0 slash 16, and we also want to make sure that the remote net is maintained as itself, so 10.1.0.0 slash 16. By doing this, we're going to NAT the local net of 172.31 slash 16 to 172.31 slash 16, and we're going to NAT the remote net of 10.1.0.0 slash 16 to 10.1.0.0 slash 16. We want to make sure that both the remote and the local nets stay the same so that it matches on the access list that we've laid out. The access list here is saying that we want to make sure that 172.31 slash 16 and 10.1.0.0 slash 16 always stay the same. So that means if I go back to CSR8 and I try to do another ping, it should be successful. And for whatever reason, it's not being. Let's see why not. So it definitely tried to go through, but for whatever reason, it's not hitting it. Let's do a show NAT. We are getting hits. So that should be, that should be working. And it's not. Why did it not come across? What does CSR2 have configured? Show IP access list. So we are matching on 31, 10, 1. Yep, all that should be working. So now we have bi-directional traffic, we're trying to maintain this connection why is that not working? let me see here That's working the way that it's supposed to. Show IP NAT translations. Yeah, that wouldn't work. It wouldn't make sense for this side to have any translations in it. Why is this side not working? Show NAT. Show X later. Hmm. Okay. All that looks good. So these are basically the static entries. You can see that static, it's an identity NAT, and it's twice. So it's identifying this logic right here, which is the manual NAT process. So we're in section one. So if, if we were to do a, do a show NAT, we have section one, which is matching on the local NAT. And then we have the auto NAT, which is our dynamic NAT. If we look at if we look at let me see here. If we look at CSR eight. Let's go to CSR7 and show IP interface brief. Yeah. So let's go to um, username is Rob, pa uh, password is Cisco, IP, HTTP authentication, 
is local IP HTTP server line VTY zero space four login local and now if I try to um, line VTY zero space four transport input is telnet and SSH go to switch eight or CSR eight and I try to do a telnet to um, if I tried to do a telnet telnet, oh that's right, telnet um, to 10.1.0.7 with a WAX source interface telnet can I, not, can I not do a VR if it were a telnet? Yeah, I can. Telnet. Telnet 10.1.0.7. Whacking off of VRF S11. And whacking off source interface. This loopback. We should be able to reach that node. So it's trying. ASA should see show con long. It is attempting to send it. But it's not being forwarded. Show nat. We are trying to translate it. Why is it not working? Let's go back to here, hit the up arrow. So it's definitely hitting the right NAT entries. But for whatever reason, it's not traversing back across. Show crypto ISASA. There's definitely a tunnel up. Show crypto IPsec SA pipe include PKTS. Oh, it's unidirectional. Okay, that's part of the problem. So let's go back to CSR8, hit the up arrow, try to tell this again, do this. So we are sending traffic out, but we're not receiving any traffic back in. So let's take a look at why CSR2 isn't transmitting. Because we see these TCP connections coming in. We do a, um, I bet you any money that, let's go back to CSR7 and try, uh, let's go to CSR8 and control shift six on that, go to global config, username is Rob, password is Cisco, uh, we're going to type in line VTY, zero space four, type in login local. And the transport input is Telnet and SSH. Let's go back to CSR7. We'll, we'll try to go to Telnet to 172.31.0.8, sourcing from loopback um, 0 0.8, whacking off of source interface loopback 0. So we're trying to telnet off of it. Yeah, so I bet you any money when we try to do the the connection outbound, it's getting natted. So one of the other things that we have to do, if we do we if we want to do this in order for this to work the way that we need it to, if we do a show IP access list we have to add another entry here. So I'm going to type in IP access list extended uh, VPN NAT. We have to type in 4 and deny IP of 10.1.0.0, 0.0.255.255 to 172.31.0.8. And then if we try doing it again, that popped up right away. We look at ASA1, we hit the up arrow, 
we have packets going back and forth both ways. If we try to ping again, I'll show you that ping, the ping works this time. That That's why the VPN, the VPN NAT wasn't set up correctly. So if we try to do telnet to that again, we top, pop in Rob and Cisco, we see the traffic going back and forth. And if we do a Wireshark capture, we're gonna see ESP packets going back and forth, but it's not really gonna help us out because if we can see there's some IC, so this just proves it. We were trying to send ICMP messages out, but it was being natted and it couldn't, it wasn't working. And we're sending it from CSR2, CSR2 is sending it outbound. And this is why I think it's super critical for anyone that wants to be proficient in these technologies to be able to dive into the technology, to dive into the whatever it is you're trying to do and fully understand what's happening. So I, it took me a couple of minutes to realize what was actually uh, occurring. And I'm like, oh, that's right. I didn't have this stuff set up. So we have all the, and we have, this is our, our Telnet connection going, trying to go out. So we have all these communications trying to occur, but because of the fact that we don't have our setup correct, we would never be able to trigger it. So these are things that you definitely need to understand from the perspective of, you know, we need to have an uh, have this configuration set up in a certain way. If we go back to CSR2, we do a show IP NAT, we don't see any of those translations in the table right we see stuff going out but it's not being so like for example um let's go back to csr7 so we're still connected right if we go back to csr2 and we hit the up arrow we see the telnet going out where we're sending the traffic outbound but it's it if we do a show ip access list it's a little disconcerting because in here we're saying don't NAT it, which we're technically not. So I go back to CSR7, I can go ahead and exit out, and I can also ping quad eight. And it, oh, you know, that's right, ping quad eight source of loopback zero. That'll work all day long. Go back to CSR2, hit the up arrow, and I hit the, the translations table we see the pings going out and stuff like that. So we know it's working the way that we expect it to. So even though it should not be showing up in the translations table, well, here's the thing. I'm not exactly 100% sure why that's showing up that way because it shouldn't be natted. Let's actually, let's do this. We can clear IP nat translations star. So let's clear the table. And then we'll go back to CSR7 and we'll do that telnet again. Rob and Cisco. Go back to CSR2, hit the up arrow for, and we don't see any translation showing up. We go, and that's what it, you would expect. When things are working correctly, you should not see any, any translations because it's not being added, right? It's being sent over the VPN. And that's what we'd expect to see. So if I were to close this out and then try to do a ping, then go back to CSR2, hit the up arrow. Now we're going to see NAT entries. That's what you'd expect to see. That's why I was like, that doesn't look right. So that's how you know what's happening from the operations. That's pretty much it. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for hanging out with me in this video. And until next time, guys, take it easy.